Hello everybody and welcome to this new video from Bicotic. So I'm sure you all know by now but Specialized recalled the Tarmac SL7. So I've built it in 3D and we're going to try and work out what the problem was, how Specialized have tried to fix it, and then we're going to ask the question, how safe are carbon steerers? But if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your mates, that'd be much appreciated. Arriba! So first of all, take a look at this video clip. Yeah, exactly what you don't want to happen. I think the starter's face says it all there. Stay tuned to the end of the video and we'll revisit this clip. Before we get stuck into this video, warning, I am not an engineer. I am not a mechanic. Nothing in this video is advice. I'm purely starting a conversation. So leave your comments down below. And if you don't know what you're doing, always get your bike checked by a professional. Now then, when Specialized recalled their Tarmac SL7, this is what they said. Harsh impacts may put extraordinary stress on headset components and may initiate a crack in the fork steerer tube. And that, my friends, is never a good thing. Okay, so here we go. I've tried to build the front of a Tarmac in 3D. It's not going to be 100% accurate because I've made it completely from photographs that I could find, but it will do the trick. So the first things we add to the frame, the lower bearing and the upper bearing, then obviously we're going to pop the forks in, like so. Next up we need to stick in the compression ring and inside that goes this little ring here. Not sure what you call that. Not entirely sure where the gap's supposed to go, but we'll stick that in like that. Now I believe this is actually the second version of this compression ring. The first one didn't have the inner ring. So if you've got an SL7 and your compression ring is black, then you need to get it checked. Then we've got the little shaped top cap. And this bit here is like a cable guide. The cables come underneath the stem and down through there. Now then, once you've got all those bits in place, then you would put in the compression plug that looked like this originally. You've got a wedge at the top, a wedge at the bottom, and this bit here with the slit in it. And as you bring in the wedges and screw them together, this expands and you pop that into the steerer, like so. You then tighten up this nut to the specified torque setting. And as you tighten it up, the expander plug expands and effectively stops the carbon steerer tube from being hollow so that when we tighten up the stem bolts the carbon can't get crushed. Whilst I was researching this video I was checking out the PDF manuals that Specialized have for the tarmac. Each part comes with a serial number and I was checking out the serial number of the compression ring on Google Images and it was quite amusing to see clearly the compression ring popped up but also a couple of toilet seats. Make of that what you will. Okay so we've got our compression plug in next up. We're going to pop the stem on. Now on the tarmac this is a little plastic cover here that covers over the clamping section of the stem. The time I got to here I just didn't have any energy left to model all of that. So if I just fade back there I've just popped two bolts in so that you can see where the clamp gets tightened up. Now the important thing to understand here and if I just get some of the bits out of view so we can see I'll also fade back the forks a little bit. My understanding of this is that it's critical that the compression plug fully encompasses the section of the stem that clamps onto the steerer. So in this instance here, that's all good. Now I can't be 100% I've got all these measurements exactly right, but if you happen to have some spaces above where you haven't cut the steerer, you might find yourself in a position that's quite extreme, but you might find that the compression plug doesn't fall below the second bolt of the stem. Now in this instance that's a problem because this bolt will be clamping on hollow carbon steerer and that's never good. Right so once we get to this point we wouldn't actually tighten up these bolts yet because the first thing to do is to actually get the top cap screwed into place and as you can see here there's a slight gap between the top cap and the top of the steerer and the expander plug which means that as you gently tighten up this bolt all the parts of the headset in the stack, which is effectively all like the bits and bobs on a kebab. As you tighten that bolt, all these things get squeezed together and we call that the preload. 
The idea being that we take all the play out of the headset, but clearly we don't want to tighten this so much that the steering isn't perfectly smooth. You do need to be careful with the preload. You definitely don't want any play in the headset because that causes problems of its own, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. So once you've got your preload right, you then will do up your stem clamp bolts to the specified torque setting. So if you haven't got a torque wrench, you definitely need one when you're dealing with carbon parts. Now, you might have thought the job was a good one there, but Specialized have taken this further. So let's take the stem off. Let's take out that compression plug, the original one. And we now have this red compression plug, very similar to the black one, but you can clearly see that we now have a much longer lower wedge. Now, I believe the recall from Specialized is actually changing the compression ring. So the original one was black and it's now gray silver with this internal ring and also changing the short compression plug for a longer one. I believe that's what they've changed in this recall. Comment down below if I've got that wrong. And this compression plug works in exactly the same way. As we can see, talk it up but the big difference here is obviously that lower wedge is going to be going a lot further down and if we just hide the compression ring and the split ring thing and if we just cut the front of that frame open so that we can see inside we can quite clearly see there that the lower wedge comes all the way down to here again this is going to be affected by how many spaces you have in your stack so the question is why have specialized replaced this expander plug made it so much longer and why have they changed the compression ring well that's what we're going to speculate about next. So at about the time that Specialized started talking about a recall, this is the photo that started doing the rounds on the internet. Clearly a Tarmac SL7 with a snap steerer tube. Now what confuses me slightly is this looks like the new compression ring, but I can't see the inner split ring. Maybe that just fell off in the crash. And I thought they did this compression ring with the longer expander plug, but I can't see the longer expander plug in there either. So maybe I have got that wrong. But looking at this picture, there's clearly a lot of spaces beneath the stem. The fact that the steerer has snapped directly in line with the compression ring, you can only imagine that this has got something to do with it snapping. So this image here isn't a Tarmac SL7 as far as I know, it's just a random picture off the internet. But this is a carbon steerer and you can see this indentation here. And if you search for this on the internet you'll see lots of examples of it and my point here is yes there's clearly an issue with the SL7 but we're not talking about a problem that only affects the tarmac if you've got a carbon steerer there are instances where this can happen and similar things to this can happen and then you have a stress riser in the carbon and if you put that under load there is a possibility of a failure so let's see if we can work out what scenarios might cause that type of indentation on the steerer tube and here i've stuck some spaces in so that we're emulating that photo a bit better let's hide some of the bits so to make this example easier to understand what i'm going to do is make that top bearing much bigger so we're effectively exaggerating a gap between the steerer tube and the top bearing and even though we're looking at this on a tarmac and arguably there's some design issues with the compression ring that specialized have been using we are effectively looking at what can happen to any steering tube to a lesser or greater extent depending on the design so in the first example imagine we're cycling along and we hit a very large pothole our weight gets thrown forwards and the tube is whacked into the front like that so there's a lot of weight going through there and depending how many spaces so how tall the the stack is and how long your stem is and how big you are and how big the pothole is will all affect how much force goes through that point there what will also affect this is how well adjusted your headset is so a loose headset is obviously going to have more play in it and more of that force is going to hit through that point Likewise, in the other direction, if you pull up really hard on the bars, you're going to get a force back through the tube here. So either of these two scenarios could start creating indentations in your steerer tube with that motion there. Another possibility is you're sprinting to win the race. Look at you putting thousands of watts through the handlebars there. That is putting the steerer under a lot of pressure side to side and could certainly cause indentations in the steerer tube if your headset isn't adjusted correctly or there's any issues with the design of your compression ring. Okay, so here's another possibility. Let's put the bearing back to the right size. If everything's working correctly, as you turn the handlebars, 
the bearings will be nice and smooth and everything will turn properly like so. However, if your bearing gets horribly worn out and gets seized, gets full of mud, grit, and generally does just doesn't work and gets stuck, then there is a possibility the steering tube will just rotate inside that ring there and that could possibly cause some wear on the steerer there or well, not possibly at all it will do so there we go there's some possibilities i could see of things going wrong in this area and that's why it's critical to have your headset adjusted correctly to have good smooth bearings in it and have your compression plugs in the right place like i say i'm no mechanic i'm no engineer i've literally just used my common sense there if you can see any issues with what i've said leave a comment down below and if i've missed anything again leave some comments down below having said all that you can have a catastrophic situation where your steerer tube snaps and basically your stem and handlebars are no longer connected to your bike and if you're traveling at any speed at all there's no real way to come back from that that isn't painful so the question is does the recall from specialized completely solve this problem on the tarmac sl7 who knows comment down below if you think it is ultimately never going to happen again so then my question is is the tarmac aside how safe are any carbon steerers and for me probably the biggest problem is it's all slightly mysterious because it's hidden away inside the bike there's the whole fashion of slamming your stem and the fact that because it's only a couple of bolts the home mechanic will probably have a crack at it but i'll be totally honest since i've been riding carbon bikes i haven't always fully understood this concept and how many people do you know how many of your friends actually ride around with their bikes set up like this and again you can't even 100 percent say these aren't safe because maybe the guy who set this up actually went to the trouble of getting an extra long compression plug but then again maybe he didn't maybe it only comes down to here it's all a bit mysterious as it's hidden away inside there and if you do a search on google failed carbon steerer there's an alarming amount of cases where things have failed on many many different types of bike it also happens quite a lot in the pro world this was simon palud's bike in 2019 can't remember what race that was but yep that's a proper snappage there then there was tom van asbrook in march 2021 clearly he's had a catastrophic failure there and that's on a factor bike and bear in mind a lot of pros are riding incredibly long stems just imagine the forces going through that steerer there so what can we do to actually improve this situation i guess at the top of the list is awareness hopefully if that's one thing people get from this video is just how important getting this right is so chat to your friends about it make sure they all know and i think in the future every six months or so i'm going to inspect my fork steerer which i haven't actually done on my scott addict rc i'm not even sure i can drop the forks out without disconnecting all the brake hoses so i'm going to have to look into that and in fact with all these new integrated cable setups that's going to make the whole fork steerer thing even more mysterious isn't it perhaps there's actually an argument that rather than compression plugs the manufacturers should be bonding in an aluminium or a steel tube into the steerer that way you could use a star fangled nut or i don't actually like those very much because they're fiddly maybe you could just have a little tiny plug that could just screw in the top like that that would maybe work i have actually read that cervello maybe do something like that I'm not 100 percent sure that doesn't actually solve the problem of getting indentations in the the carbon so maybe we need that metal tube on the outside the irony being there is we've almost gone back to forks with a metal steerer which is what we used to have so who knows maybe the whole thing needs redesigning if you've got any brilliant ideas how we can do this put a comment down below so do you remember this So I got the clip of the crash off a friend of a friend. It's obviously a Cervelo. Looks like it's got an aluminium insert in the steerer, but I'm gonna try and contact the guy this happened to and find out some more details. But why don't you get commenting down below, give it your best guess, and I'll make a follow-up video on this and we'll see who gets the closest. And that's it for this video. I'm just gonna leave you with this. As I was researching this video, I was on the Specialized website and I just happened to have a look at the S-Works Enduro mountain bike, just because I think it's pretty cool. Unbelievably expensive, 11,500 pounds. And I just wondered what that little bit was there. Thought it looked like a bit of a mistake. It actually turns out that that is where the cables go on the cheaper version of the Enduro. So if you haven't got an electric dropper, I think that's the dropper post, is it? Then it's gonna go into a hole in the frame. Trouble is, if you 
buy the really expensive one that has got an electronic wireless dropper post, you get a hole in the frame that looks like that. That's completely unacceptable for £11,500. Blimey. And on that bombshell, I will say goodbye. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please do. And I'll see you next time.